All right, hey, attorney Brian Parker here with a promised video. This week, I guess I'm doing videos. Uh, people are asking to do certain videos. So this is my take uh, on the $24 million consent order against PRB, PRA by the CFPB. Uh, I'm supposed to say this early now. Like, love, and subscribe if you like the information on this and the literally hundreds of other videos I've got on both my YouTube channel and uh, more importantly in, in the diversity and the amount of videos and the amount of instructions, the amount of templates, uh, collectionstoppersolutions.com. So we got that out of the way, uh, but that membership website is just full of everything you need. Got a couple of videos on PRA, which are quite popular, but this is about uh, the consent order agreed to by PRA, Portfolio Recovery Associates, and the CFPB, the governmental, governmental agency, that in some administrations it's strong, in other administrations it's not so much. Uh, right now it's on a good run, and I think it's trying to do as much as it can in the current administration. Uh, that's as much as we're going to say about that. But the headline is, I'll put it up, Cindy, CFPB orders repeat offender portfolio recovery associates to pay more than $24 million for continued illegal debt collection practices and consumer reporting agencies. I'm going to put up now uh, the, uh, the press release, Shazam, and that's just a block starting with Washington, D.C. and ending with today's action is one of many actions the CFPB has recently taken to hold repeat offenders accountable. I am bringing you this video so you can use it. I am uh, not taking a political or personal opinion, although my professional opinion is I'm going to do whatever it takes to win against PRA for my clients. And this does that. So I'm going to give you my takeaways that are useful to you. You're going to hear from me what you have not heard. Uh, I've, I've, I went online. I do research for you. So, and I'm also doing it for me because I don't want to put a piece of garbage out for you. And there's other um, attorneys that have made comments on this, uh, this consent order. A consent order means just as it does for you and I when we agree to do something with someone suing us or we're suing them. Okay, we're gonna pay, make 12 payments of $100 and that's the consent order. If you fail to do that, it becomes a judgment. That's a consent order here a, on a much larger scale, but the same consent order that you and I agree to at our little level, the Portfolio Recovery Associates has agreed to with the federal consumer agency overseeing all debt collectors and debt buyers and all manner of consumer regulations. And the takeaways that I get from this order, which I'll attach to my membership website, um, I'm also going to attach to you, attach for you, a lawsuit that PRA filed against my client how I responded in Word for you to use incorporating this uh, $24 million judgment into the answer, into the counter affidavit, which is also in Word, attached to the membership website video for you. Um, I'll also add my show notes. Exciting. <laughs> Sometimes the show notes are really good because they, they attach to the video I'm giving, and if you miss something, or you don't understand my nonsense, you go, oh, I see what he's trying to say. That may or may not be the case here, but you're gonna have lots of videos attached to this, plus the consent order, and let's see how we do. So, the PRA in 2015 was accused of representing the amount or validity of an unsubstantiated debt, meaning they're just saying, yeah, you owe us because we say so, without any real foundation, foundation, see every debt buyer lawsuit there is out there. They're picking on PRA because, like I said, in 2015, they agreed to pay $12 million and to stop doing the very thing they continued to do and caused um, the government to come back in and go, hey, you're still doing this. 
and they put him on what's called a repeat offenders list. And I don't like that. I am really weird as far as people being punished. I, I feel if you get um, punished for something and you're done, you shouldn't have a scarlet letter against you from there on. However, if you keep violating something where you agreed in a consent order to say, I'll never do again, that's a different story. They're accused in 2015 of collecting on debt without offering uh, documentation con to consumers, even after saying, we're going to send it to you, mis <laughs> then misrepresenting it, provide the offered document in 30 days. They were sending out letters and saying, you owe us, and we're going to send you the documents in 30 days. Why were they doing that? My opinion, because the 30 days is part of the validation rule, and this is my opinion. So if you throw that in the letter, Maybe the consumer said, oh, I don't have to dispute this and get the stuff in 30 days. They're going to send it to me in 30 days. It's about money and there's no coincidences. There's no accidents. There's only thoughtful approaches to avoiding uh, regulations that you may or may not like in your attempt to get consumers to pay you money. That's my opinion. Collecting on time bar debt. That's a, a common thing, but PRA... And I do know that from years of litigating against them, they are repeat offenders in that regard, but I haven't seen that in a while. But apparently somebody did. So initiating debt collection lawsuits without possessing the required documentation. So I'm gonna get into that for you and make it, I'm gonna show you both sides of that and also why you may think that I'm against this. And I am in some respects, and it may seem a little political. It isn't. And then suing collect to collect time bar debt. So those are strong things. Essentially, they're saying you are suing us, PRA, and you're not providing the proof. Gee, where have you heard me say something like that? See every debt collector video I've got, over 100 on my membership website. So specifically, PRA was targeted, and I see this a lot. The law does give you second chances. America is built on second chances. And I think uh, this was a bridge too far for the C... I always mess this up. The CFPB. Um, and they're right. If, if you promise not to do something and you agree you should be fined $12 million like they did in 2015, and then you keep doing it, I totally understand it from an American corporation perspective. And that's what's going on these days. Attorney generals throughout the nation are filing these lawsuits for the money rather than the enforcement. They'll do a press release saying, hey, look what we did for your consumers. The consumer's like, well, what did you do for me? And where's the money that you got? So, and see the mortgage-backed security uh, nonsense that occurred telling us that we, they were taking care of us. Anyway, so the CFP director said, uh, hey, this is a repeat offender. They keep doing the same thing. We're smacking them, right? So one of the things I'm doing for you today is how can I use that, Parker? Because you're going on and on and on, but you're not telling me how I can use this. I just want to give you the other side, all right? Inside ARM, uh, I think it's called Account Receivable Management, is the lobbying group for PRA and all collection and collection industry uh, debt buyers. They looked at it and said, complete BS. Um, one, some of the things they said is <laughs> that the uh, CFPB was making a mountain out of a molehill. There's only a couple of uh, dozen lawsuits. Uh, it didn't like the fact that it was putting people on repeat offenders when PRA in the consent order, the actual consent order, which I'll attach to the membership website, doesn't really say or agree that that occurred. Um, they focused on something that I'm going to focus on with you briefly. The FDCPA itself doesn't require what the consent order now requires PRA to do before and during a lawsuit. Um, they also took umbrage. I don't know. I've never. I've always heard that by polit politicians. Still don't know what that means. But they didn't like the claim of dozens of lawsuits for time barred debts when PRA literally files hundreds of thousands of lawsuits, 
and a few doesn't make them a few bad apples doesn't make them bad guys essentially but they're paid to look at the other side of things but so am i because as a trial advocate if i don't know their side of things in a trial in a motion whatever it is better than they do uh i'm gonna lose or i'm gonna be a, sh a schlocky attorney and i've always been upset assessor compulsive about this I have to know the other side. I've been in trials and depositions where I actually tell them, no, that's wrong. You should be saying blah, 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 because my brain is, is hardwired to know everything. And it doesn't serve me other than makes me sleepless. I want you to see the other side of things. So PRA is gu <laughs> guilty is a bad word, is guilty of all these things. The other side, the industry, collection industry is saying there are areas of gray, um, you're asking us to give more documents than the law and the FDCPA requires. That's correct, by the way. <laughs> um, so what does the FDCPA require? The FDCPA requires, there is no standard of amount of documents when you file a collection lawsuit. That may come as a shock, but if you see every freaking video that we have, they don't bring everything. It isn't that they're doing it um, purposely. They never own the right to sue people, generally, as you see from my videos, because what's my favorite expression? What is it? Eula, hello. That's right. Ding. Use their documents against them. So we are saying in our videos, use their lack of evidence against them. The CFPB is saying your lack of evidence is bad for consumers and you shouldn't even be bringing the lawsuit. So that's true. I, on the, the other hand, and for you, want them not to bring, because A, y the burden of proof is on them. So if they can't prove their case, they can't, you, they can't win. So this is good. You can show, hey, look, a government, governmental agency said you're not doing what you're supposed to do. I wish it was on every collector, but it's on this one of the biggest. Um, and here's the complaint that the industry have. It imposes a substantiation requirement on PRA and dictates that PRA must possess enormous amounts of documents before engaging in legal collections. The FDCPA doesn't require that unless you send them a validation letter, but that's not stopping any lawsuit and it's not a defense per se. It is if you send it before the lawsuit and they blow you off and then claim you own the debt when you've already, you can use that as evidence rather than something you completely shut them down, but it's good evidence. And the industry is complaining, hey, you're rewriting the FDCPA. They are. If you look at the Supreme Court decisions, this is 2024, a lot of those decisions we're, and you know this, smacking government agencies that are overreaching and telling cities and states what they have to do, these federal agencies. And the Supreme Court says, whoa, 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 small government, stay the heck away, EPA, Department of Education, yada, yada. So that is what's going on here. The industry saying, why are you overreaching, CFPB? And you can bet the next administration, if it's different than the one we're in, will shut this agency down. And they may be right in that regard. I believe they have overreach, but it exists for us, so we should use it. So um, it prohibits portfolio recovery associates from collecting debts unless it has tons of documents. This is big and better than the FDCPA itself. I'm gonna tell you what it requires. It requires, and it says it in the order, Creditor level documentation, meaning I take out a loan with a creditor, I sign a document, there's a truth and lending statement, there's all this information substantiating the, the two parties, myself, the debtor, and the loaner have an agreement. You don't really see that in 99% of the cases I look at, or any PRA or MCM or Crown Assets, or any of these debt buyers, whoever they are. They just don't have it because, again, we're talking about the forward flow agreement allows this shellacky stuff to be sold and they make no representations without, court, without recourse. We, you take it it's as is. So the debt buyers 
He's not to be, it's not to be sympathized, they just don't have the documents. So the order is sort of strangling both PRA and the creditor that sells the schlocky stuff in the first place. I'm not sympathizing with PRA, but there is some legitimacy in the other side saying, we got to do what? And they got to do what? They got to bring the house. So to sue you, there must be a contract. An affidavit ain't going to work anymore. There must be credit level. I mean, when you become obligated on the debt, let's say in 2018, that paperwork should be in your 2024 lawsuit against you. It's great for us. It is great for us. Take advantage of why you can, because if a new administration comes along, those things are going to change. But I want you to look at a case. Let's put this case up. Cindy, Harvey versus Great Seneca Financial Corp. 453 Federal 3rd, 324. It's a Sixth Circuit Federal. It can be used all over. It's better in the Sixth Circuit. Great in the States. Shazam. And in that case, a Miss Harvey sued a typical collector. Let's, it's Great Seneca Financial Corp. You can put PRA, MCM, Crown Asset, you name it, Velocity. And it said, hey, you sued me for a debt, for, it's 12000 and you just, I'll tell you what they supplied. They attached the complaint were two exhibits that listed the account number, the balance, and the statement closing date for each account. Hey, where have you seen that before? See every debt buyer lawsuit against you. She, she fought and lost, so she sued the debt buyer and said, hey, you're violating the FDCPA, you're harassing me. I think it was uh, 1692D, yeah, and E10. E10 is like a panacea, it's like everything. You misrepresented everything. So the court was asked to see if there is a legal requirement to bring the house, to bring the very genesis of the consent order is you now must bring creditor level documentation to file this lawsuit. You won't hear that in any other review, but that's what that consent order is. I've attached it to my membership video. And that's what it is all about. And it's right. You hear me all the time going, use their documents against them. The lack of documents, dude, is what we're using against them. So the, the federal agency here that is, is overreaching and it's going beyond the FDCPA, it's a federal agency, it has no business being in Congress's uh, regulatory affairs, but that's what it's doing. The debt collector won at the federal district court level and the federal court said they're not required to bring the house. Now, you can't bring a lawsuit when you knew you never had the documents. And that's the distinction that the appeals court made in this case. They said, yeah, they didn't bring the documents when they were, looked, they were asked to appeal the decision in the federal court against Ms. Harvey. And there was no evidence that they didn't eventually intend to bring the documents against Ms. Harvey in the state court case she lost. They just, there's no evidence that they didn't have it and filed the lawsuit anyway. And Ms. Harvey at the appeals court was saying, find that they must bring it every time and, and, or it's a violation. And the court said, we're not going to find them not bringing everything right away to be a violation of the FDCPA. So Ms. Harvey, it was found against her on the appeal court level that said, a debt collector, a debt buyer is not required to bring everything when it sues. And that's that Harvey case. And I face that problem when I go to the federal or federal level when I'm saying, hey, they're not bringing everything. So the rule is, if there is evidence that they never had the ability to prove the case, and you've got to go through discovery to find that out, and that's what the appeals court said. Unless you've got pure evidence that they never had the ability to sue you and the right evidence to show they own it in the first place, fine. But without that, you can't hold them accountable until the discovery process has gone on. What does that mean? The CFPB now is saying, yeah, I know there's a federal court ruling on this 
and ye, which is supposed to interpret the FDCPA. Yeah, I know the FDCPA says they don't have to bring the house and bring everything, but we're going to find PRA because you didn't. We're finding you $24 million and we're putting you on a repeat offenders list. So the industry is sort of right. So what does, um, uh, wh what is an example of filing a lawsuit where you definitely didn't have the right to sue and you didn't bring the stuff? Any time a debt collector sues you on an SLL, on a case where it has gone beyond the statute of limitations, that's automatic because they can't bring the proof because the statute of limitations doesn't apply, applies. So even if they had everything, they're not allowed to sue after the statute of limitations. So that's a dead nuts harassment violation of FDCPA. That's why PRA threw in, I think, in the consent order that, hey, PRA is suing on dead weight on SLL uh, litigation cases. And that's why the industry said, wait a minute. Yeah, there's dozens of cases of, of, of suing on when the SOL is passed, but that doesn't make us in violation of the thousands you're accusing us of doing, and therefore we're on a repeat uh, offenders list. So, Miss uh, Harvey lost, even though she showed in her belief, without proof, by the way, so <laughs> she's arguing that they didn't prove their case, and without proof, she was claiming they sell millions of accounts without, and then sue on these without proof. Uh, they don't provide the paperwork, and the court pointed out, where's the proof? Um, she talked about the electronic, you see these, these, these electronic excerpts. She complained about that, um, and she complained that they never received the original credit assignment, and she may be right, but she didn't bring proof. And the court's like, hey man, you're accusing them of not bringing anything, but you're not bringing anything. So here's the holding. The court held that a filing a lawsuit without present means to prove the case is not a violation of the SDCPA as long as there was the capability or means to do so down the line. Filing a time-barred lawsuit is always filing a lawsuit in violation of the FDCPA. So the Harvey case was not anything that rose to the level of the FDCPA violation. So the arm industry accounts receivable management collection lobbyists claim the order that I'm presenting to you today goes against the law and against court level review. So here's exactly, Cindy put this up, exactly what the basis of this whole thing is, the consent order that I'm now telling you you should use, all right? I wanted to give you the yin and the yang, the good and the bad, and and both sides, because I think I'm duty bound on that as an attorney who has to know the other side of things, and you should too, because the more you know about their side, the better you are to go in for the kill, trust me. Um, I'll misquote this expression, but it's freaking true. Know yourself, know your enemy even better. And Cindy will put up the real quote, and it's true. That's how you, I get through life. And that's, uh, unfortunately, I'm, I've got a weird brain. So if I'm going to an event or I know I'm going to be seeing situations, I already know where they're coming from. I've already presented my argument in my head. I've already had these fantasies of arguing with them. And I, it seems like a repeat performance when I actually get into the events. You should be like that too. Know your other side better than you know your own case. So here's the basis of the order. Original account level documentation, or as they, as they term it, O-A-L-D, Cindy Shazam, make sure it's up there, is any documentation that a creditor or the creditor's agent, such as a servicer, we've talked about that. For example, a uh, web bank loan is the original creditor, the servicer is Upstart Network, for example, or a Finwise bank is also Upstart Network. Uh, each level, depending on what the debt is, has services. If it's a creditor, JP Morgan, for example, and they sell it, to a secure trust, see every video and every evidence that they do. The servicer then is JP Morgan's. It continues to collect the debts. So provided to a consumer, meaning any documentation at the credit level, meaning here's the loan, you signed the loan agreement, here's the uh, TLA 
uh, showing exactly what the terms are. That's got to be available to PRA before it sues. I don't know how they can do that. It's schlocky pennies on the dollar debt that PRA's life blood. They only buy schlocky pennies on the dollar debt. I think they made 187 million at the time in profit at the time of this consent order. They make a good living buying schlocky debt for 10 cents on the dollar or whatever, then getting thousands of dollars. To demand, now listen, the forward flow agreement that we've been talking about is what the deal is between whoever the creditor is and PRA. It dictates, we're selling you this crappy debt, we're not making any representations, we're selling it without court recourse, which means you can't sue us for how bad it is if you get sued, and, we're not, and it's gonna be sold as is. Meaning they're not giving him the documentation. So what's going to happen possibly is now the creditor's got to give them the stuff or they're not going to buy it. Or you're going to have bad debt collectors getting involved with the creditor anyway and taking their chances. So if they don't have the creditor level documentation, PRA cannot sue on this stuff. I think you'll see PRA just doing it anyway. How do I know that? Funny you should ask, because we are gonna show you what I did with this uh, consent order, all right? So here goes, this is what you can do if you wish, put your rules and facts from your state. So here's the lawsuit that was filed against my client. I'll do the first page of the lawsuit, Cindy Shazam. And there's, it's obviously a PRA case. Cindy put up the second page next to it. In fact, no, no, yeah, yeah. Put the second page next to it, Cindy. Uh, paragraph six through 11, Shazam. So that's your basic law. So if you look at number six on the second page, Comenity Capital Bank is selling something to plaintiff, all right? Remember that, because take that down, Cindy. Put up the third page, bill of sale, Shazam. There's your old friend, Lynn Fisher. We'll depose her if we have to. When I do depose her, I'm still on her heels. I'll put it, the transcript on there. It'll be fantastic for you. Every time I get close, they settle. So, and that's a hint for you. Try to depose her as well as get a hold of that forward flow agreement. So look at the bill of sale for value received and for further consideration, mutual covenants conditions set forth. What's it called? Oh, the forward flow agreement. Accounts Purchase Agreement. They actually use the name. So that's where your creditor level documentation, the actual loan agreement or credit holder agreement is gonna to have to be now. And it's not gonna happen. It's too expensive to provide that and they purge that stuff. So in this case, they're passing on the debt to Synchrony Bank, RFS Holding, uh, Synchrony Card Funding, Retail Finance. And then Lynn Fisher signs her name with the many, she's a CF, CVP recovering operations for one bank, vice president for another, but with no assignments. But here's the important part. So I think you're seeing now, you're gonna see, Cindy just every three seconds put up the pages that I have with um, the sale file. And there's several of them. Just keep going, Cindy. This is what you're gonna see in your PRA lawsuits. Lots of this so that PRA can go, yeah, we supplied everything, it's credit level, but they are not supplying the original agreement because they can't have it if they're debt buyers. So Cindy put up the affidavit, Shazam, and in this case, they're saying it's a community bank case and it's an account assignee from a synchrony bank. So, um, Look, put up the bill of sale again, Cindy. See the bill of sale, Shazam? There's nothing about community bank. So why are they suing my client for a community bank and then even putting it in an affidavit? There are no assignments. So this is a problem because in their complaint, they are saying, uh, if you look at page two, put up page two of the complaint, Shazam. The accounted issue was transferred, sold, and assigned from Community Bank to Plaintiff. No, it wasn't. It's from Synchrony Bank. So 
There's no accidents, okay? When, you, when it comes to money, there's no accidents, there's no coincidences. So if something was going on there, they didn't provide an assignment. So what do you do with that? I'm going to show you. First, uh, Cindy put up the first page of the counter affidavit, Shazam. So you'll have a word, counter affidavit, and you can see it's a PRA case. And I have, if you look at number five, a review of the paperwork shows a bill of sale from Synchrony Bank with many entities and signatures on the document without any assignment or account number. And then I put second page, Cindy, bill of sale, of course, that's in your counter affidavit, as I preach constantly. Um, and then I'd like you to go, and then go to page three, number nine. There are several entities in the bill of sale, all without an assignment to each, from each signer, okay? Which is true. And uh, the part I want you to see now. Okay, Cindy, go to the end of the, of the counter affidavit, Shazam, uh, I, I list, hey look, they said they assigned it from Community Bank, and the page before, you can tell this is all false and dead and secure trust because the word is a debt, yada, yada, yada. And for example, paragraph six and seven that are stating the account was transferred to PRA from Community through the bill of sale, even though the bill of sale says synchrony, and you'll see from the last page of the account stated, uh, counter affidavit, that's exactly what they say. You always put what they say or are missing into the counter affidavit and that counter affidavit follows you along. Look at number 15. The lawsuit violates CFPB versus PRA consent order for $20 million, $24 million as they have not supplied creditor level documentation as required by the order. So that's your account stated affidavit. Your answer will say exactly that. It will be attached to the video and it will say to, as to each of the allegations. First, Cindy, put up the preliminary statement of the answer, Shazam. This is all in Word for you on the membership website. You can see I've broken down and I've written in big Letters, the PRA, $24 million, bring it, okay? Now look at the page with the answers to the allegations of the lawsuit. You can see, I say exhibit one, which is, okay, Shazam put it up. Exhibit one, which is your affidavit, which incorporates all the nonsense that they did or didn't do. And then the complaint, and then number two, all throughout this, the answers, the PRA, $24 million, you got to put it in big letters, all right? Bring it. And I put that in, put up the affidavit, put up the affirmative defenses, Cindy, Shazam. There you go. You can see I've mentioned it at the beginning. And so you're attaching to your answer, if you want, it's your case, your rules, the Exhibit 1 affidavit, you must have that, counter affidavit number two, the consent order. It's big. But great, it brings attention to itself. In a nutshell, you've given the court a nutshell at the very beginning. Remember we talk about our 30 to second to one minute rule of ADHD? Have the court, which is very busy, know exactly where you're coming from. And that's your complaint answer using the consent order judgment. I've given you the pluses and the minuses of it. But the big plus is use it now for the next couple of years while you can because if the next administration is going to gut that and everything else about that consumer organization. That's my prediction. If, a, if one side gets in that's not currently in there, it's just, it's, um, it's good. There is overreaching. I try to present to you that some federal agencies are overreaching. This may be an example of that. It also may be an example of utter frustration because PRA, sure, here's $12 million, we're just gonna keep doing it. Because the ends justifies the means to them. We pay 12 million, but we make 180 million. And I think we're gonna do that. And, the, and corporations have been doing that since the Pinto. <laughs> they could have fixed the Pinto gas tank, look it up, for like a couple of dollars and said they go, yeah, but we'll sell millions and not have to spend that money. 
and they ended up paying, I think, $126 million in one case, but they made gobs of money. That's a bean counter um, determination or corporate determination, in my opinion, but the uh, government agencies aren't long for this world with the next administration, and in some cases that's a good thing. There is overreaching here. While I agree with it, and you should too, and you should use this consent order, it is overreaching. For your purposes, use it while you can. It's your government agency dollars at work, you may as well use it. So I hope I haven't been too confusing. I wanted to present to you my opinion of the $24 million order against PRA. Use it in your answer, in your counter affidavit, in your affirmative defenses. You will get the case and debt eliminated. I do it all day long. It's very quick. I hope you do too. Like, love, and subscribe. I hope I've done a good work for you. I know this went long. I'll add the show notes. I'll add the answer in Word, the counter affidavit in Word, and uh, everything you need, plus their original lawsuit, so you can break down. The lawsuit that they brought here in Michigan, they bring everywhere else, so you can use it. Good luck. I hope this helps. Brian Parker out.